Republic, and we have James again. Welcome, James. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Nice to be back. Um, so I am playing around with this new camera setup today. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you notice the differences. Um, you usually have like a super pro setup, and I'd say I'm not at that level yet. <laughs> what, what kind of camera are you using? This is a software camera. Did you did you ever play with Reincubate Camo? Mm-hmm. So this is that. Okay. And yeah. then this is with your phone? This is my phone, yes. This is like an iPhone 11. Mm-hmm. And it has this um, this virtual bouquet. So I was actually on Twitter asking, like, why hasn't anybody done a virtual bouquet effect? Mm-hmm. And uh, the Camo guy chimed in and said, oh, yeah, we're working on this. It'll come soon. So I reinstalled today. Uh-huh. And they've got a beta virtual. So you can see a little bit of artifacts in the bouquet. You know. Uh, but overall, I think it looks pretty good for being kind of just all software driven virtual. It you is a little little bit of artifact here by my head. <laughs> but you know, uh, uh, only in the sense that it looks then like the book is in focus, right? Right. Right. But the book like it looks it's a little off because the book should not be in focus so if the book is in focus but at a different depth. That's obviously right. it's a little okay. little awkward but <clears throat> that part they'll get better at, right? Yeah. They'll get, they'll get better at that pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you, you know, when I when I installed this today, then I was remembering. I think last week you told us about Galactic.io, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and yeah, I, I think the starting point for Galactic is more of these like animations and stuff. But I wonder is is yeah, does Galactic and this does Galactic end up having these kinds of like camera control, like software camera control features at some point, or are they sort of different paths? I mean, I think okay. So the guys will have, or the team, the guys and gals. They will have, they might have a different perspective. But to me, the interesting thing is not just the, I mean, I think it isn't just the fact that this is a camera, but right now for them, they're a layer between me and the camera. And so the result of that, you can do like whatever the cool animations that you can turn on or off and stuff like that, right? But at the same same time, like I think the real interesting part is that it is a, you know, that layer is just a web page. It's all HTML, right? And so then you yep. can build all manner of interactive web applications on top of that from, like, I think the thing that they do internally is, like, you can imagine a Google Doc in front of me right here, right? Yeah. Just writing on top of it. And so that, I think that piece is, like, the near-term place for innovation as opposed to just just the, hey, you're looking, like, the cute fun part or the... Right. Or like the, my face is clearer in some way, right? I think, so I think the fact that, you know, the moment anything becomes a web page, then you open up for all sorts of, I don't know, you, this line is your line, you know, all those sort of permissionless innovation, right? You get this opportunity. And so that's part of what's exciting. Yeah. And it is the, yeah, converting it from a web page into like a video stream. Is that kind of the core of the challenge that they're, and, and then making it easy, right? Making right. the web page, making building whatever you're building on top of the web page easy, but also just making sure the the harder part to make easy is just making sure the client works well on all manner of devices, right? Right. And, sort of, and install, you know, the installation process is still a little too hard, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Do, do that, you know what the the current state of the world is with things like um, like Mighty App using kind of webcam you know video related kind of capture stuff oh, okay i i i might have misunderstood this i thought web app was streaming a web page to me isn't that what web app is doing oh mighty mighty app is doing yeah yeah but yeah. i wonder like if so if i'm using a thin client with mighty uh-huh. and they have a you know a BP server yep. that's actually running the web browser typically it's the web browser's job to pull the bits off my camera right and my yeah, camera yeah. is local oh, to me. That. That's a great question. I don't know. But did they provide like a little shim in their light client that pulls yeah. bits off my camera and sends it? And then does that? That's a great question. I don't know. I don't know. That's yeah. really interesting. I mean, I guess we'll have to ask Sahel. Yeah. One of the one of the funny things that's going on is, you know, sort of everyone's focused on what are folks with the right reason, folks are focused on crypto. Folks are fi- focused on big data 
engineering stuff. Folks are mm-hmm. focused on productivity apps, right? Folks are, you know, like, here are yeah. all the things that people are focusing on, which totally makes sense. At the same time, it feels weird to me that there are all these like changes in that relationship between fat and thin clients. Yeah. Right. So probably one of the cool things I saw this week, and I'm a little obsessed with this the, it, SQLite. Have we talked about SQLite yet? Uh, I don't think we've done, not, not in any depth. Okay. Um, so SQLite is basically a relation, lightweight relational database that works on your machine, right? You know, sort of, it, mm-hmm. it, it, have, do you know anything about SQLite? Have you seen anything about it before? I mean, I, I, I know that people use it, and I'm, I don't know a ton about it. But. S-Q-L-I-T-E. It is probably the most installed database in all of human history because it is on every single Mac device. That basically, mm. it's an open source project, and for whatever reason, Apple decided they liked it, and they use it for their back end for all mm. sorts of slightly crazy things. Like, so everything from, like, all your messages, if you're on an iPhone, they're all stored in SQLite. Like oh, I see. All your photos mm-hmm. stored in SQLite. And then they make it, it's it's a little bit hard to get access to it, but it actually it's not that hard. Once you go poke around, you can, so you can write queries against it. And, You're uh, saying from, from Mac OS, you could write queries against the SQLite well, interface in your to file system, like your photos. Like, you'll find, like, if you go digging around your file system, you'll find, like, oh, wow. under the hood. You okay. know, you so you just, like, open up Terminal and you can kind of start, you just hit. Or, or this guy, Simon Willison, who's this amazing guy, who it, it invented Django, the you know the the CMS application yeah. platform? He's got this thing called Dataset, D A T D A T A S E T T E, and and with that, he's got a bunch of ways to unwrap you know sort of SQLite, you know sort of interface yeah. and stuff like that, and and so that's that is like I think. So that's that first part's crazy, and then the fact is that like sort of SQLite is so so small; it's open source is really easy. So that there's lots of interesting angles there, but the craziest thing is that someone put on Hacker News like sort of pulling running SQLite on a web browser, and so I guess the way and I didn't I don't totally get this yet, but I think I think they might have like implemented SQLite in JavaScript or WebAssembly or something, mm-hmm. right? So. Mm-hmm. So then now you don't have a, th- you know, we're like like the great thing about what Mighty App is doing, it's a super thin client, right? Yeah. The crazy thing about like um, that demo is that that's a really fat client, right? Right. You right. know, and so all those changes feel like yeah. a little bit right now, right? You know, and right. so, in part because we're so used to downloading all this junk and JavaScript yeah. and advertising, we might as well use it for stuff. That <laughs> we're doing, so. Right. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think it's an interesting point you make because it's, I think we're also seeing these kinds of changes with things like Apple and their perspective on OSs themselves, right? Because like the convergence of Mac OS with iOS is kind of, you know, obvious and seems like it's taking a step closer each day. And what is a MacBook Pro versus an iPad Pro versus right. an iPhone? Those right. are all like on this convergence path too. So that's another one where it's kind of like the layers are getting kind of, collapsed in ways or kind of like let's say reworked in ways right that i think create like a lot of you know a lot of opportunity for new behaviors to emerge around those changes right that's an interesting interesting space to to watch yeah what what other actually with that perspective what else what else is kind of like architecturally changing about the way we kind of use the internet or software Well, I mean, so your point around like the victory arm beating Intel, right? Is sort of, I guess, what is that really? Is that a risk versus CISC thing? Uh, arm versus Intel? Yeah. Uh, like, probably. Yeah, probably. Because in the, I, I remember when I was in college, it felt like a big religious debate, right? And then it looked like Intel won right. by adopting a bunch of learnings from risk. Right. right, and then yeah. they lost eventually, but it's not clear to me whether that's like management problems or whether that's just fundamental. Right. At some point, did you do like assembly language programming? I I did for like two assignments and kind of wanted okay. to do it myself. Right. Yeah. Did, did you do it in like x86 instruction set or in more like a risk? Risk. 
Okay. We, we had a big x86, kind of a whole like semester course of x86. Oh, God bless you. Uh, and I actually ended up TAing it. I loved it so much. <laughs> actually, okay. You know, one of the things that I've been thinking about from an investing point of view is like thinking about like other signals of quality, right? Mm -hmm. TAs. TAs. It's a strong TA, TAs for CS courses. And yeah. maybe not for stats courses. That's like a strong signal of quality because it shows that you're oh. both like curious and interesting and good enough that the teacher thought you were good and, you know, all that sort of stuff, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, so you're saying to use, to, you're saying to try to create like a rubric around how to identify the kinds of people you might want to I mean, meet or like, work with or do that's stuff right. with. That's right. And it's just so mm -hmm. hard, right? It's so hard to figure out why anyone's any good. And it's also hard to do it in a way that's not like, now that we're conscious of all the ways that we're secretly biased, right? It just shows you yeah. all, there's all this missed opportunity all over the place, right? And then mm -hmm. so constantly looking for these signals of quality, and one of them is that. Right. And, and Mishti is asking, what's the equivalent in non-academic context? What do you think, Mishti? Well, I just think of when people talk about, like, we had Sar on the other day, and he had all these anecdotes about founders who just, like demonstrated the ability and willingness to learn about just about anything by doing random side product projects and whether it was like who was he talking about i think the patreon founder yeah. was a musician yeah. and yeah. like one of his sars like early signals that this guy was legit was he watched a music video he made from scratch like building robots and this elaborate star wars set and he had no background <laughs> in any of this he just like taught himself how to do robotics and like yeah. corralled a bunch of friends to help him organize this thing so it's kind of like that spirit maybe in the startup world but oh 100%. i'm not sure and, and you know that's so interesting because then the other part is like can you you know as it always is if, if you're a founder you're trying to signal quality right and right and that's how much is that kidding game right <laughs> well, of course it could be gamed everything gets gamed yeah but then if you're like a if you're teaching people teaching people how to do that well like that's a great isn't that a great idea, right? You know, so like how to organize your friends to do something fun or how to like build something. Right. Again. It feels like you should teach that in high school or, or something. Right. I remember, yeah. didn't, didn't, I, I, I apologize if I got this wrong, but I think you, James, and Bloomberg Beta, I think hosted a robotics competition thing, like a little play session. Was it, Does that sound right? Like many years ago? This is like, you know, probably bordering on 10 years ago <laughs> at like a maker. Oh, you know, I think Siobhan did. Oh, that, I think that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At like one of those kind of, I forget what it's called. Those, you know, those like maker kind mm -hmm. of warehouse things mm -hmm. and you just like mm -hmm. show up and everybody got to work in teams and build robots together. It was kind of like a battle bots light right. kind of thing where you kind of can do it in an afternoon. Right. right. Um, I thought I thought you were there. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't have a, a heavy hand in organizing it. But yeah, I, it no, may have been that Siobhan organized it. But you were there. Yeah, that's and Roy was there. Yeah, so but I think those kind of things feel like even more alive today than then. Like you know, just the 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 nature of having places to collaborate and make and mm -hmm. hack on things. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then the other thing that's going to happen is like. So I'm kind of boring and cautious, so I've not seen anyone, right? But I feel like a bunch of folks are going to be vaccinated very soon. They're going to be running around, right? And I think mm -hmm. it, it, there's going to be this fizzy, there's like this already, this sense of fizzy ferment happening. Right. And, and, I, and it'll be so interesting to see who ends up getting together or starting something yeah. this summer, right? Right. And so, okay, here's I, my contrarian take. Yeah. It's going to happen in San Mateo and not Miami. <laughs> I think there's truth to that. But the most I interesting companies that they get started are going to be started by like these very boring guys and gals who are like <laughs> in a like uh -huh. little corner of some office in San Mateo, and they're going to be working right. away and going to uncover something amazing. Um, so, but I, I wouldn't even. I mean, I, I think Miami has enough of its own heat both literal and figurative that i think great stuff will come out of there oh yeah but i think the the interesting 
if I can point to what I think is the contrarian thing about what you just said, is it's not that it's not that I think Miami will not produce that. I think Miami will produce it, but I think when it happens here, it will happen in San Mateo instead of San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Which I think nobody's really calling for that yet, but I think it seems it seems kind of likely. I don't know who the mayor of San Mateo is, but they should be running around more. Right? I know, right? Yeah. What are they why they should get on Twitter and or wait, is, is, is San Mateo the best example of a hub that we have kind of mid-peninsula? I mean, would Redwood City have Maybe a play Red- there? Or? I mean, you know, like there's all that empty space right off the, right off the sort of Caltrain. Right off the Caltrain, yeah. yeah. And you can, it's like, you know, what is it, 20, 30 minutes from Palo Alto or from San Francisco? Yeah, because I contend that the coffee shops are better in Redwood City, but the food is better in San Mateo. But San Mateo mm-hmm. might be less walkable. San Mateo less walkable? Then, like that part of Redwood, like, City, that, like you know, you know that there's that chunk of Redwood City where you could do pretty long loops. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, you know, right. Having deep thoughts. Well, I feel right. like in, I'm, I'm sorry, in Redwood City, but in San Mateo, you, you can go to the park. Yeah, like a few. Not, not as it's not nearly as generative or like visually because you know, right. you know. The well, movie, they, they've got that. They've got like Japanese garden over there. That that's right. That's right. That one's actually. Well, I, I, no, I, never to... walked, I never walked there. You know, because Austin used to have his office there, right? Yeah, yeah. And and Nils, you know Nils Johnson, right? Okay. Nils from Beautylish. So Nils actually was a he. He was sort of the uh, one of the early hubs of San Mateo Energy when he was working on uh, a righty, which was a, a kind of a telecom company. He came over from New York. Okay. He, he was um, somehow like friends with a bunch of us, like okay. uh, like Opman and. If you ever rented a Yale Shacham from Google, okay, yep. Um, a lot of us, you know, in Nils hung out, but he was in New York. Then he moved to San Mateo. He was uh-huh. his mistake was kind of like, look, I'm coming from New York. I give up. This city thing is not <laughs> a real thing here. Like San Francisco is not a real city. So let's just <laughs> full on just go to San Mateo because, like, <laughs> let's just not kid ourselves. So he moved to San Mateo and then he set up an office at. Um, at the Union Bank of California building on yeah. El Camino. Yep. And um, it was the same office where Napster was uh, operated for quite a while. Right. And then when we were starting Green Patch, that was our first physical office because uh, Nils just uh, had like way too big of a space. Right. And then that same building, Eladen Atman. Yep. Uh, yep. Set up in the next floor below at the Union Bank of California building with uh, uh, this uh, town me, right? Which uh, became Geo. Yep. Became Geo. Geo. Uh, Geo API was it? Okay, so this all makes me feel like I this the the clever associates are going to hang around San Mateo. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was. Actually, YouTube was started in San Mateo. Yeah, yeah. YouTube was like a little hole in the wall kind of office okay, above. Like, like some, I think it was above the Amici's. Some ambitious politician. I, I, it, there is some ambitious politician in the Bay Area who's going to declare that they're open for business, right? Yeah. And they're going to do very well, and they're going to be like, "It's a shorter flight," and then <laughs> in the summer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like the the rebirth of the peninsula. But I had some friends who were just in Miami, like, and it feels really exciting. I mean, you can come, they yeah. came back, and they're like just buzzing with. Mm-hmm. Like, it felt like they got a shot of caffeine right in their veins, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I've I've heard that from a lot of people who've who've gone. Is they really they really liked it, and they That's feel a lot cool. of energy there. Right. What was it? Do you think it was the like serendipity that they felt was recaptured? Kind of a lot of people being in this concentrated space, like thinking yep. together. Yeah, yeah. And they, they had a they had a dedicated week last week and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. it's going to be the three, like the two awkward gals and the one awkward guy who sit in San Mateo who are really going to build that thing. That's interesting. That's funny. yeah. Or or so they're then, all remote because remember we talked to like Andy from Read.cv. He he has like this one guy in Tokyo that he's working with and then his one friend, I think in New York and I forget where he, he is, but they're all kind of just like, I, I, he was so low. Just, key. They all basically just, just like text each other and build this thing. 
he just posted a uh, a picture I thought I saw on Twitter yesterday of them all hanging out in Berkeley. It isn't I, the, the crazy that? thing about Reed is or CV is isn't it isn't their taste just impeccable? Oh, yes. there's something to be said about taste. And so I don't yes. know. Like you know, it's sort of like here's here's the picture of them hanging out in uh, in uh, a rare post vax photo of the team in Berkeley, California. Read TV, yeah. Just the, the taste, you know. I was I was actually thinking about like this concept recently because taste, I feel like, is so important. It's almost like, in in a sense, it matters so much more than anything else. Is like having good taste, and how do you develop good taste? And if you wanted to, like, if you wanted to create, you know, a college where the Ooh. primary, the primary, you know, college is a heavy word, maybe, but the primary, like accomplishment or you know certainty when you graduate is that you actually have good taste right. what would that look like what comes first does taste come first or does ambition come first i think you can have good taste without a huge ambition i think you can only have good taste if you have the ambition to have good taste i think that oh, I okay think about i often think about like sort of uh, there's an early description of steve jobs and he had bad taste initially but he had the ambition to have good taste. And so he would just constantly right. be trying to figure out what's good or not good. And I think that idea, like that, and then, you know, coming in my mind, sort of taste feels like one of those things that comes from God that just strikes you and you become like sort of really tasteful. I just don't think that's true anymore, right? I think that like, it's yeah. just that willingness to just like talk and grind and see and see and see and, you know, and I think that's actually, that, that willingness to do those reps, I think like that's the mm -hmm. actual secret to good taste and and do you think that taste in one domain gives you like you know some substantial advantage when moving domains or do you think it's mostly domain independent or how do you think about it kind of cross domain i, I think i think that it is i think that taste like charisma is comes out of context and it comes out of context in which you're in communication with a community of people Right. And I think that mm -hmm. that's that's true. That said, like when taste gets passed from one place to another, another field, I think oftentimes that's most that's partly about taste. That's partly about prestige. Right. And status. Right. That I think mm -hmm. you have high status because you're a famous classical musician. And thus, I think your views on politics is much better or whatever. Random. Right. Yep. And then you but then your ability to bring in some of the insights from something that adjacent into something else like that ability is partly. So like there's partly genuine substance, but some of it is just status, right? It's just it's just status transfer. Right. Yeah, actually I think I think the status transfer actually helps sort of curate good taste to you, or mm -hmm. at least mm -hmm. gives you like an advantage mm -hmm. in the, the candidate set that you're looking at already has some taste vetting because of your status. And so then you're just doing more like fine grain tuning on yeah. your taste instead of like like I, I think actually taste is a huge part of investing. And so, you know, you spend a lot of your days meeting companies right. and like, is it getting, this? The reps, getting the reps and trying okay. to see what's special, yeah. right? Because what's special today is very different than what was special in 2010 or to be honest in 2018, right? Because right. some things get flat and easy to do. Some things are hard to do. Some things are scarcer or not scarcer. And I think all of that shifts. So what's scarce today? So I was talking to someone about this. Um, uh, I think, uh, like, I think everyone realizes there's plenty of money, there are plenty of potential customers. It's attention, right? It's like, and it's not, you know, not just on the consumer side. It's everywhere, right? So that yeah. ability to command someone's attention is, I think, like that's where the heart is, right? Love is about attention, right? And then money follows, and I think that's true. It's also partly true, but it's even more true now because if you can show that you've captured the attention of someone, then then capital will follow, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you know, people will make fun of some name your company that just raised a bunch of money at some crazy valuation, and they'll say they only had half a million dollar of revenue. How good could it be? But that's mm -hmm. entirely missing the point, right? Because right. the thing that's changed is that that investors now recognize that if you get attention from people who have money, they'll pay money and they recognize and they realize the, that upsell is valued properly now or valued more. And so that changes the, dyna the dynamic.
Right. Mm, that's interesting. But how do you think about like how fickle that attention might be? I mean, it's better than having no attention at all, but that's a right. so, tricky thing to measure. So that, of course, is exactly the trick, right? So tell me, is it a fad or is it a fashion or is it a long-term change in etiquette and protocol? And the reality, though, is that it's so interesting to hear people speculate about, like, Clubhouse, for example, right? And there's, like, a way in which, like, people talk about it as if, if I just think this through, I can solve the problem and I could be. <laughs> but the truth is that it really depends on who Paul hires tomorrow, right? Or who, who he hired three weeks ago who may do the deal or who may build the part of the product that changes the dynamic between this and that, right? And so mm -hmm. I feel like that's the... Or I talked to someone, a friend of mine who's, company is doing really, really well on the one hand, but it's like hit a, kind of hit a wall because there are questions about TAM, right, mm -hmm. about the total available market. And everyone will say, oh, isn't it obvious that, you know, the total available market was too small? It's like, no, it wasn't. It wasn't obvious because he still can redefine his total available market. Like all that right. stuff is open for redefinition and rebroadcasting, yeah. right? And so yeah. I think that's what's kind of a, that's probably why, that's another thing I probably believe now that I didn't believe initially or didn't. Right. <laughs> So, so I, I know you're. I know you have a hard stop at twelve thirty, and I wanted to at least make a proposal. This has been fun, and I could imagine a few different things we could kind of yes. do. So, you had this proposal of kind of a show content format kind of idea that we discussed last week. Yep. Which I think we're all excited about, but I want to figure out like, is it a different thing than what we're doing here? Like, does it have its own name and kind of process to it or is it kind of just an ex like do people come expecting to talk about 2030 and is it kind of like it's got its own kind of theme and process to it or is it just like a building in public thing so should it be I a different it, it is building like i think on f every other friday there's building 2030 in public with me like and james champ and yeah. then we have someone to join us awesome Right, cool. because you know, you could like we could be like second foundation and build it in private, and then hope that we'll secretly manipulate everything. <laughs> DK might be smart enough to do, or we could be like the first foundation, just be out there, right? And so to say, <laughs> it's in public, because I know DK has a secret building in private conversation going on. <laughs> as well, <but> like, yeah. <laughs> no, all of my private conversations now, I try to push here, like. <laughs> Like I, I meet I meet a founder who's building something and somebody's like, Oh, you should meet this person. Can you chat? I'm like, like Why don't you come on the show? And they're like, I Well, it. I love it's it. kinda sensitive and I don't know if I, I was like, No, just come on the show. That's the, the only thing I'm attention. Or the scarce asset right now is attention. So I've got to go to my twelve thirty. But cool. In two weeks. All right, so yeah, yeah. So two weeks. Two weeks. We'll, we'll just keep it a standing thing. It'll be called building in public twenty thirty. It'll be like this plus other people or whatever if we want, but even if we just sit here and read Hacker News together, I think we'll have fun. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks, James.